It's been a while, guys. How are you? Good. That's good to hear. I'm going to pretend like you answered and try to make this as parasocial as possible. Because if film lovers are sick people, uh, people who watch YouTube, oh my gosh, I don't even know if there's a word for those kinds of people. Um, they're beyond sick, I can tell you that. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. The premise of the channel has kind of changed lately. It's kind of morphed into, uh, yeah, film lovers are sick people, and I'm going to blame the movies. Um, that's kind of the new critical arc that we're on now. Um, I, I still unironically love movies. Uh, most of my videos are me um, earnestly worshipping the people who made them, the people who are in them, the people who uh, filmed them. Uh, that's typically what I do. It's just, uh, yeah, now I've been feeling like films punish you. Films punish the people who watch it, so, you know, <laughs> why not punch back every once in a while? Uh, I saw, I read an Alan Moore interview today uh, on Deadline. Alan Moore, of course, the comic book pioneer Alan Moore, who uh, everyone loves, everyone loves. And I, mean, I think it's, his reputation is well earned. He deserves all love he gets, blah, 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 blah. But I read a really cool interview with him, and he shares a lot of my thoughts because I do think that films make people sick and inform the ethos in damaging ways. I think films are more damaging than they are beneficial to, to, to culture. I definitely feel that way. And um, he's brought up something I've been saying for, for possibly years um, about, uh, man about the nature uh, of comic book films, particularly, particularly, specifically, superhero movies. And he said in 2016, um, the same year that uh, Britain decided to leave the European Union and America um, elected a, a nationalist dictator, a monstrous figure, um, six of the 12 highest grossing movies were superhero films. Now, he's not saying, he's saying this is correlation, not necessarily causation, that is a symptom of a larger problem, but what it is is certainly indicative of, um, of people wanting unreal solutions or sensational, simplistic solutions to incredibly complex problems. And I've been saying this for a long time um, after watching films like Iron Man. Like in 2008, we had both Tony Stark and, and, and Bruce Wayne uh, on the screen in a really huge and significant way. Um, the longer that, that, that you're shown this attractive character, this attractive billionaire on a hill, like the, the Randian ideal of success, um, the, the capitalist messiah figure who says, fuck the government, um, I'm going to do exactly what I want to do, and I have spunk, I have attitude, and more importantly, I have a moral compass. A moral compass that is objectively good. Then that kind of um, capitalist savior becomes a lot more attractive. And after eight years, between 2008 and 2016, after eight years of being spoon-fed the, the, these kind of damaging archetypes, you're kind of conditioned into desiring that for yourself, even if you don't even know it. Uh, I think that the superhero craze, the superhero um, huge wave, the superhero generation of the 2010s, sorry, I just got a... Um, I just got a text message from Style is Substance. You might know Justin's channel. He says, did you just delete the video you uploaded? And I did. I did. It was like this, but I misspoke in the beginning so terribly. I did the whole Alan Moore spiel. But instead of <laughs> calling Trump a nationalist, uh, I called him a socialist. And I don't know why. It was just on my mind, I guess. I guess we all mess up. We're all, uh, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I can't do that, like, within the first minute of a video, you know? But whatever. But film lovers are sick people, and I think films inform culture in a huge way, a, a monumental way, and mostly not for the good. But this channel's been more focused on, on micro because I, like, hyper-personal. So I think that if I could, like, show you examples of why I'm going to blame the movies in my own personal life, that's the best way to provide a baseline for a larger critique of culture. You know, I mean, and we can get into fa fascinating things. I'm talking about things that are, like, figures, people that I'm attracted to. And I'm not just talking about uh, 
body shapes. I'm not just talking about um, like like accepted um, physical appearances. I mean, of course, that's a large part of of cinema, making people sick with unrealistic expectations. But it gets a lot more unrealistic when you realize that you are attracted to personality types, to unreal archetypes. Um, just like that billionaire on a hill, I'm also talking about, uh, like me personally, I'm, I'm wildly attracted to psychopathic brunettes. And I can p possibly blame, you know, Joss Whedon for that. I mean, I grew up with, with, with Faith on Buffy and with River Tam on on Firefly. Uh, like, I'm, I'm completely attracted to that archetype. And then you, you, you notice that, that these people adopt speech patterns. These people have learned their speech patterns from TV, from film, from, from, from all sorts of things. And, and so have I, to a certain extent, or to a very large extent. I believe that media is to blame for why I don't really think human beings are all that unique. We can just talk about um, the normalization uh, uh, make the normalization of, of culture. Uh, when, when talkies came around, so many accents have disappeared. So many accents in, in, in the West, in America, have died out because people started to mimic uh, the early talkers. People started to mimic Cagney and Edward G. Robinson and even Humphrey Bogart, uh, uh, Lauren Bacall. Uh, people started to mimic um, the speech patterns they heard on TV because that was made unreal. That was made immortal, even. That was made perfect. So what is the concept of the self? And that's something Joss Whedon would love, would love to ruminate over. All of Joss's works are ultimately about what is the self? Who is the self? I think that we're mostly Hollywood. I think we're mostly, um, that we're mostly, like, deliberately manipulated into being a certain way by media. Like, it's, it's almost impossible to figure out who we actually are, considering that who we actually are is fictive. We're mimicking things. Even people who make YouTube videos, you're, like me right now, like subconsciously or whatever, maybe even deliberately, um, like I'm mimicking what I think authentic YouTube would look like. But it's still performative. Everything that we do in this life is drama. Everything we do is performative. Um, film lovers are sick people, and I'm going to blame the movies for making me feel like my life is scripted. Our life is not a movie, or maybe. Or maybe it is. It's a song you should listen to. YouTube search, Our Life is Not a Movie, or Maybe. Great song. That's really the aesthetic, the attitude, the atmosphere that, oh, that I'm trying to evoke, I guess. It, it does get so powerful. Mm. Doesn't mean you can't love movies. You should love movies. Um, some of the greatest and most famous movie lovers in history, Scorsese, Truffaut, Tarkovsky, Godard, have all um, had famous quotes about how, um, how film is an abusive relationship, about how cinema is at least a one-way relationship. It's definitely not a mutual one. Uh, Truffaut himself is the one who said that film lovers are sick people in the first place. It's the ones who, who never say anything like that who you actually have to worry about. I'm talking about like Tarantinos, I'm talking about Spielbergs, I'm talking about these people who do seem to get all of the solutions from film, all, all of the answers to life's puzzling questions from film. Um, speaking of Spielberg, you should watch my uh, E.T. video. I think it's just called E.T. the Extraterrestrial by Film Lovers or Sick People. It's, I think it's really good. I think it's a really honest one. Um, it, it really helps... Um, my work, because my, my work now is not necessarily an indictment of film, um, but I'm definitely punching back. I mean, because it's everything. It's, it's from the way that I behave and, and, and to the, uh, the people I'm drawn to in social situations, to the people I want to fuck. It's kind of gross. It's kind of disturbing. It's grotesque. It's morbid, and it's deliberate. Like, you have to know this is, this is what happens when you film something. Something remarkable, something irreversible is done to a thing when it is filmed. It's not just objectified, it's not just immortalized, something else, something that has yet to be defined is happening to the thing. It has a power. It has a power it didn't have um, previously. 
Film lovers are sick people. I'm gonna blame the movies, and I can give you about a million reasons why and how you can blame the movies. Firstly, because they're guilty. <laughs> because they're absolutely guilty. Um, it's just fascinating. I, mean, I hope you guys have been well. I know this is a super basic question to ask, but like, how have you guys been? People have been saying that 2020 is is a crazy year and it is for me too uh, i don't know how much um the pandemic or or uh, <laughs> anything like has really anything outside of my control has really uh played into how my year has been crazy all of my years are crazy because i i make these insane decisions for myself and then i have to live with them you know it's terrible it's hard to find some sunlight here like i said i filmed a video like this earlier but i had to delete it because because I misspoke in like the worst way within the first minute I always allow my I always misspeak in these unscripted videos but I, I, I always allow it if it's after the five minute mark if it's after the five minute mark I'm like whatever it's fine um 90 percent of people won't get the, get to that mistake it'll be fine but that that was so erroneous and so terrible and it was right in the beginning uh, uh so I had to redo it and I redid it here I hope you guys have been okay. I've been, like I said, my mind's just been racing, you know? I mean, this new premise for the channel, this new, like, uh, this new way of doing things is interesting, um, but it does paint me into a corner. Um, you know, I think we should all continue to still love movies, still love films, still carry that torch for this dead medium. It's, it's, it's pretty fucking dead. Um, but still carry that torch for it and the way it makes us feel because it is inspirational but we shouldn't complete something that is inspiring with something that is good uh, films do two things usually F firstly it reflects society as it is but the arc of the film itself and perhaps the purpose of film is that it uh, shows us how society ought to be right but it's inherently unreal because first of all, just by method, just by the method of filming something, you're making something so extremely unreal as to make it celestial or holy. And it seems the smaller you get, the scarier it gets. Because the larger you get, you can get to like, okay, well, this determined the Trump presidency. Uh, like, you know, the post 9-11 films, like... Um, Films feed culture in really nasty ways by reinforcing stereotypes or even creating a brand new ones, um, popularizing and normalizing them, um, uh, bad toxic attitudes. But I think when it gets to, 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 to micro, when it gets hyper personal, is where it gets like really, really dangerous. Because then you're like, without knowing it, um, I've modeled myself into an archetype. You know. I've modeled myself into something unreal, and I am actually desiring, seeking out, tracking down things, people, women, men, situations, experiences that are cinematic. That's almost why nothing could ever compare to one even mediocre scene in a forgettable film. Because the more we see something so fantastic, the more... <laughs> the more mundane our lives have to become. And then eventually, it's so visceral and so cathartic, you might not feel like you're getting any life experiences until you see it portrayed on film. That's why taking pictures or selfies really seem to make a moment lived. Like, it's not even lived if it's not now um, uh, recorded. We can go down a lot of different avenues. I, I do have uh, some interesting things coming to the channel. We've got a podcast coming. Um... Got some more analysis videos, group discussions, probably vlogs, I don't know. I do know I have a podcast coming. I do know that you guys are going to like it and going to have some good guests on it. And uh, it'll be fun. Definitely stick around for that. Oh my gosh. You can play a drinking game in these, um, in these videos of mine where when the cigarette goes out, you have to take a drink. Because it seems to happen all the fucking time. Well, that's a crack lighter. That thing almost burned out my fucking eyeballs. Wouldn't have to worry about films then. Finally be free from their clutches. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. My name is Zachary from Film Lovers or Sick People. This has been a video, you know.
That's certainly what it's been. Ah. Uh, now, hopefully, this one can just go up with no problem. <laughs> but I'm a fuck up, so I kind of have to live with that.